Hello everyone, welcome to today's show. And if you are joining for the first time, this is part of our industry series for which we meet every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. We review one vendor or the solution independently. And for today, we have a very interesting solution. It is called uh, Financial Force. Uh, there is another solution in the Salesforce ecosystem which is called uh, Rootstock. We have already reviewed that, so we are going to look at this one as well. Uh, before we do that, we are going to start with everybody's intros. I am going to start with my quick intro. If you don't know me, Sam Gupta, principal at Elevate IQ. Elevate IQ is the independent ERP and digital transformation consulting firm. On that note, I am going to move to Andy for his intro. Thank you, Sam. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Andy Pratico. I've been involved with ERP software for mostly small to mid-sized manufacturers all over North America for about well, four, four years. years or some crazy length of time, <laughs> uh, forever, uh, longer than Sam's been alive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, I also uh, uniquely, I, I assist companies and advise companies regarding how to evaluate ERP software. I've got a book that's on Amazon. And uh, I do webinars and things like that. But uh, thank you so much for joining. I hope I can contribute, Sam. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining, Andy. And if you are in the audience and joining for the first time, uh, make sure you guys post your questions and comments. We typically try to cover them during the show. If you run out of time, we'll make sure that you receive your answers. On that note, Andy, I am going to start with the quick briefing on where financial force fits overall with respect to their corporate strategy and in the Salesforce ecosystem, how they compare with other ERP systems and uh, what is going to be the uh, sort of the highest win rate for them among the industries that they really like to target uh, overall from the product perspective as well as from the psychology perspective. Um, so uh, financial force is a very interesting solution, okay? So obviously Salesforce has been trying to become more of the platform play for a long time. We have reviewed Salesforce. I don't know if you recall, Andy. Uh, you know, we so we found that they really like to be sort of the CRM play, but at the same time, they are also trying to become more of the platform where other developers can develop the industry functionality. And in their case, the developers are going to be uh, not small players as you are going to find with the other ERP systems. In their case, there are going to be some serious uh, development companies that are going to be uh, private equity funded, VC funded. So obviously, overall, Salesforce ecosystem is pretty humongous. Uh, I like to compare it with uh, Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft has fairly large ecosystem as well. And they are more of the platform company as opposed to more of the business application. Now, Financial Force has another twist, the way they started, Andy. And I don't know if you know their history or not. Uh, and I don't even know if you are familiar with the solution called Unit 4. And we are going to be reviewing them most likely next year. We had parked them because for uh, until now, our focus has been primarily the product-centric industries. But we have done some service-centric industries as well, uh, service-centric solutions as well. Uh, so now we are going to be reviewing in Unit 4 shortly. So this Unit 4 company, and I'll give you a little brief here for Unit 4 as well, so you can connect the dots between the relationship between Unit 4 and Financial Force. So Unit 4 is targeted for not-for-profit. They are going to have probably the deepest functionality that you are going to find for really large schools, universities, and there you might not even recognize whether that's really an ERP, to be honest, okay? That's how different that is going to appear, and that's how different those industries could be. Obviously, the basic accounting, financials, uh, you know, procurement is going to be fairly similar uh, in general, but even in that, there are nuances in terms of the way they work. Their CRM workflow 
is going to be very unique and different. Their operational workflow is going to be very unique and different. So the way Financial Force started, the Financial Force had the unit four as an investor in this company. So it started as more of the subsidiary built on top of Force.com platform or the Salesforce platform. But then, you know, they became big by acquiring a lot of different solutions. So initially, they were not necessarily the ERP system. They started more as the financial uh, solution than the acquired PSA from another company called APDO. And they their, their consulting division is with Wipro. I don't know if you are familiar with that company. That is more of the Indian, really big Indian company. Uh, mm. They are one of the largest, almost like Accenture. Uh, you know, so the, the consulting division is with them, but they built a product for PSA and they sold this to Financial Force. So that's how Financial Force got PSA functionality and not even sure if you are familiar with what PSA stands for. It's called Professional Services Automation. It's really designed for consulting companies to uh, provide that project-centric functionality. And when you look at the project-centric functionality, it's very different overall when you look at these business services, consulting services, companies like you and me. I mean, we are not necessarily a manufacturing company. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's very different operations and, and workflow. Yes, I understand. Yeah, so I'll pause there. I don't know if you're going to have any commentary there based on the comments I offered, then I'll build some more on that. No, no, not too much. I, you know, you're right. I'm not super familiar with the Financial Force product, but I certainly do know how it's it has a relationship with uh, Salesforce. And Salesforce, of course, is the uh, uh, what do you want the flagship CRM system in the world these days. So I'm sure it's got some good features as well. Yeah, so obviously they are extremely deep overall in the CRM functionality. And CRM itself, it's, it's a humongous ecosystem. If you look at the amount of integrations that you are going to have, the amount of capabilities that you're going to have, when people think of CRM, they are thinking, okay, maybe module of the ERP. But that's probably 5% of CRM. CRM is far bigger. It. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In general, CRM is, is far bigger. And now the people who are going to be in the Salesforce ecosystem, the companies, that are going to be really CRM heavy or if they are utilizing Salesforce. And in general, if you look at the tech companies, consulting companies, they are massive, massive um, users of Salesforce because their sales cycle is, is far longer. They are going to have very thick layers of marketing automation. They're really big on content in general. Uh, and then, you know, the transaction is like once in blue moon, they are going to get like a million dollar deal. <laughs> That's not their brand and butter. I mean, their brand and butter is going to be in that uh, pre-sales, uh, you know, process. So that's where they uh, spend a lot of money and energy in aligning those processes. Um, so if you don't have any other comments, uh, in terms of the comparison, I guess, you know, we have reviewed Oracle ERP Cloud. The way I like to think about this particular product, it's very comparable um, to Oracle ERP Cloud in general. In terms of the industry focus, the way the platform is built. And I like to differentiate between your product-centric industries and the service-centric industries. Uh, these two are completely, completely dif different from ERP perspective. Typically, you don't want to implement a service-centric ERP to your product-centric industry and product-centric ERP to your service-centric industry. That just Absolutely. doesn't work, right? So even in service industries, there are different layers overall. So the way I like to compare or think Oracle Cloud ERP, in my mind, is a very, very, very service-centric ERP the way it is done. Obviously, they all are going to claim they can all do manufacturing. They are going to have a bunch of manufacturing logos as well, but it's not really designed for that. Workday is another solution that a lot of people sure. think that it's ERP. They started as HCM. They built their financials. They have a little bit of procurement. Uh, and now you know they are going to claim that they are ERP as well. But they are only ERP for the service-centric in industries. In fact, there's a, a you know little correlation there between how these companies grew, but now they see themselves as competitors. So if you look at the the uh, you know typical sales cycle of Salesforce, Salesforce is gonna go with Salesforce plus Workday plus ServiceNow plus Financial Force, and that's why they wanted to have Financial Force. Because once they go to SAP, then, you know, 
uh, they are going to lose everything, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that was a very typical combination. And that's why you had these best of breed solution. You had Salesforce, you have Workday, uh, you had ServiceNow. And what else am I missing here? There's one more that I'm missing here. Uh, For HCM, you mean? No, best of breed uh, architecture. When you look at the best oh, of breed architecture. Okay. So Salesforce is really big in, in that. CRM space, HCM, we have Workday, and then I, I I guess you know P2P solutions, Coupa, Ariba, those are but oh, those are slightly yeah. different. Oh yeah, uh, there's lots out there. Right. So again, in terms of comparison, the other comparison that you're gonna see on these slides, uh, you know, Salesforce had a big threat overall from NetSuite as well. And it's very interesting. I always thought NetSuite as more of the uh, you know product-centric uh, product. Uh, you know, because they were always heavy into the e-commerce warehouses. I never thought that product as more of the service centric, but NetSuite's big focus is actually in the service centric industry. That's where they win a lot. A is lot. that right? That's where yeah. it really focuses, eh? That makes sense. Um, I would not say that's... And project even... management as well? Yeah, yeah. They are really big into that. Yeah. yeah. So tech, uh, I would say services consulting, NetSuite is really, really big in that. And that's why financial force, in fact, Salesforce sees them as the competitor, even though if you look at the tech stack of Salesforce, they are all built around Oracle tech stack. Uh, uh, obviously, Mark uh, from Salesforce, uh, you know, he had a little Oracle background. So the tech stack is probably going to be driven by that, right? So there is a little, uh, you know, correlation there in terms of their technology exposure as well. Um, but What's the back end database for Salesforce? Uh, Oracle. Oh, it is. Well, there yeah. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Oracle, Java, you know, uh, yeah, okay, traditional right Oracle down. stack. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's why you have a little divide in the market. If you look at the tech stack, the overall portfolio, uh, you know, you have the service companies, tech, media, telco, healthcare, um, you know, all of them are going to be heavily crowded by uh, Salesforce as well as our Oracle. And now Oracle is pushing into healthcare a lot, like a lot. Okay, really, so yeah. obviously Salesforce was all, always there. Okay, so if you don't have any other comments, I'm actually going to start with the slides. So uh, great. And then we can take some more comments. So here they are saying Financial Force is a cloud-based application uh, company headquartered in California. Obviously, there is a little cor correlation uh, there as well because Oracle is in California. Financial Force is there. Uh, you know, so you obviously have that. Uh, that provides a cloud ERP solution for Force.com, uh, a cloud computing platform from Salesforce.com. Uh, financial force supplies accounting, billing, PSA, rev revenue recognition, uh, ACM, and supply chain management. It's Ooh. very interesting that they are saying ACM because obviously, in fact, I mean, see, if you look at even Rootstock, uh, Rootstock started more as the MRP product. Uh, even today, I don't think they have mm -hmm. equality. And typically, if you have to go to Salesforce ecosystem, you are looking at integrating at least... 10 different apps to get the ERP functionality. And even after that, you probably might not get that, uh, you know, because obviously integration is extremely hard in general. Uh, yeah. You know, so so even today, I think Rootstock ended up building their own accounting module. Obviously, that's weak. Uh, but initially, uh, Rootstock plus Financial Force plus a bunch of others, they were trying to sort of, uh, you know, gang Evolve up. Evolve into a full-blown ERP. Exactly. Exactly. <clears throat> exactly. So here, but now everybody is trying to develop their own capabilities as well. So these guys that seem to be developing their ACM capabilities, Workday obviously has financials. They seem to be winning, uh, you know, a couple of logos, I would say, but here yeah, not a lot uh, in financials, but yeah, they, they, they are doing okay. Um, here we have Financial Force was founded by, uh, you know, obviously we have a bunch of people from Unit 4. Uh, and salesforce.com. So that's where the background is coming from. It's really uh, sort of the brainchild of Unif Unit 4 or baby of Unit 4. I don't know uh, what is the correlation, but there is definitely a tight affiliation, uh, at least from the product psychology and target market. Uh, then, you know, the, the way they started, it was a single leisure design that enables real-time financial management and is built on salesforce.com technology platform force.com. Okay, so initially when they started, it was just one ledger. And probably for these smaller companies, especially tech media, they don't have to have a lot of ledgers. In general, their financials are 
easier unless they are looking at um, you know hundred dollar subscription based uh, business model where they are billing hundred dollars every month then their business model could be extremely involved as well but for the most part you know in consulting business you are probably going to have monthly billing or you're going to have uh, you know uh, the milestone based payment for most projects and the majority of them are going to be super expensive so you are not looking at million projects you are probably looking at 100 projects so overall volume is not the same as you are going to have for the product centric industries so that's why their uh, you know financial capabilities were leaner as well in the beginning but then they grew i guess um okay uh, so salesforce is private uh that's a good question actually no no salesforce is public they're public okay yeah yeah salesforce is definitely public yeah mm. um yeah um uh, financial force could they are definitely private they are probably not obviously yeah, financial gonna, force is the not, money getting pot, tossed into them eh? yeah 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 but i'm actually shocked based on the acquisitions that salesforce has done they have not acquired either financial force or rootstock so i don't know what's going on they have acquired some of the wars, but they have not acquired. I always uh, thought there was some relationship there. Not is it's arm's length, is it? Uh, I mean, obviously, Salesforce is investing a lot in these companies as well. They are trying to build their own ecosystem. Right. Uh, you know, the goal is really for Salesforce to win deals. Uh, whether they have to buy these companies to be able to win those deals, or just you know investing and be more of the silent investor, I would say. But there is mm. definitely alignment. Yeah. And these guys are getting deals because of Salesforce as well. So there's going to be a natural synergy. There's no question about that. Um, okay. So here uh, we have some more commentary. In in 2010 is when they uh, bought that PSA platform. That's where they got the ERP uh, capabilities. So Apidio uh, is the company that I was talking about. They are the, more of the consulting firm. They still exist in Montreal. Uh, my understanding is that, yeah, they are like one of the largest Salesforce consulting firm. Uh, and now they are part of Wipro. Wipro is like one of the humongous consulting firms from India. Um, so here in 2023, during Financial Forces annual customer day, the company announced the acquisition of supply chain management, vendor-less software, and human capital management vendor, Vena Workforce, in their intention to round out the back, uh, and I don't uh, back office applications portfolio, and I'm not even sure if I understand what they mean by supply chain management vendor-less software. I don't know if that is a name. It doesn't seem so. Sounds like, like an oxymoron, doesn't it? I don't know. I really don't know what that is, to be honest. And then I don't know what that means. Meaning, you know, is it going to be like you don't have vendor, and then you are doing supply chain? I'm not too sure what that is. Uh, but that's very well, interesting overall. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So here they are saying in 2014, the company and well, uh, financial force ERP. Uh, okay. So this is where they got the ERP in 2014. Uh, in 2014 as well, $50 million. Uh, Advent International uh, is the investor there. 2015, they did uh, $110 million from technology crossover ventures. Uh, and obviously, Salesforce was always involved in that. Salesforce is involved in every single deal. Uh, that is going to be part of their ecosystem. There's no question about that. Um, OK. And obviously, one point I would like to note is any of the Salesforce applications are going to be super mobile native. Uh, that we saw in the case of Rootstock. Rootstock was, had one of the best mobile experience in general. Uh, and anything that is built on force.com, uh, you know, the mobile experience is going to be native. And that's one of the best thing that you can get in the Salesforce ecosystem. Um, so obviously, financial force is going to have that as well. Not a lot of ERP systems can provide uh, the mobile capabilities. And I'm not even sure if you really need that. Uh, you know, who is going to be opening up their GLs on mobile phone? Um, I don't know if that is the smartest idea, but sure, you are going to have mobile capabilities here. Uh, um, some more commentary here. So here, PS Enterprise, and this is the news article, I guess, uh, is a web-based product built on force.com. Um, so this was another acquisition, I guess, they did. And this is the APDO1 that they are talking about for professional services teams. And this is really quality development. If you look at the product screens, 
they have done wonderful job which is mind blowing because obviously this was a consulting firm and they could actually develop very streamlined product one thing i do like about salesforce ecosystem the way salesforce governance is overall in terms of their apps uh, for the most part they all seem very consistent just like acamatica so one thing you can be sure if you are going to be in salesforce ecosystem or in the acamatic ecosystem as the quality of development is going to be slightly better i'm not going to say that every app that you are going to find as add on is going to be equally superior but some uh, apps are going to be really good uh, especially if you have really financially backed developer developing uh, if you are going to have developers uh, you know developing from garage good luck with that application <laughs> um, and you can probably do a better job there uh, <laughs> 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 um okay so salesforce.com and financialforce.com uh competitor competitor netsuite so this is where they are referencing netsuite as their competitor and mm. if i my understanding is right i think this article is from 2013 uh you know so they were recognizing netsuite as the competitor in 2013 i don't think there were a lot of erp system that were really cloud native uh as such uh so then uh yeah. some more commentary here uh here we have uh, some more uh, they are saying sap is on again off again uh cloud product business by design so this is the comment on business by design product this was the and uh this is the sap's product okay and again when i look at the business by design product uh, it seems to be more of the service center products that, on the back burner now is that right yeah uh, it, it, it it always had sort of the questionable future in general, yeah. uh, even inside SAP community. Uh, you know, it never had sort of the backing for the product. Even if you talk to SAP resellers, they are probably all going to claim that the product is going to die. Uh, but obviously, uh, you know, this is probably the most mature product uh, in the cloud that SAP has, especially if you talk about the operational functionality. But for some reason, even SAP treats it as more of the stepchild. Uh, it was in definitely general. one of the very first in the cloud that's for sure it's almost a shame that you know sap could not commercialize that to be honest okay it's uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's really a big shame uh, that you know it has the least market share i would say uh, overall it's done really well uh, you know it's a cloud native product uh, one of the best again from if you look at the cloud product from sap uh, business by design was one of the best product uh, but it never got any traction agreed yeah uh, I mean, i've talked to i've talked to customers using it and they all are pretty happy yeah, depending upon which industry you are talking about, uh, for some industries, it could be a great product. There's no question about that. But for some industries, you are probably going to be needing a lot of add-ons. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but SAP Business by Design, the way it was designed, it was really for those project-centric industries. That's where yeah. it has real depth. Uh, you know, And again, it was really designed for the consulting-centric, uh, business-centric industries. Uh, it has very deep product model, bomb model for manufacturing as well, but not everything. Uh, that a manufacturer is gonna gonna need. Yeah, it's uh, it's missing some pieces there, but for project management, it's it's very very good. Yep. Uh, yeah. But obviously, this is a jab on business by design that you didn't really have any sort of products in the cloud. Uh, you know, NetSuite was stealing the show. Acumatica stole the show. Uh, overall, from the cloud perspective, there's no question about that. Uh, so that's why Financial Force was really big on this one. But I don't know if Financial Force really picked up. To be honest, I don't know. You know, if it is as hot as uh, your NetSuite or Acumaticas of the world. It does not have as many uh, installations or uh, implementations. Um, so NetSuite uh, has pretty much uh, had the entire market for uh, mid-sized mid companies wanting a cloud ERP to themselves. Uh, there are a large number of cloud accounting products for SMBs, and Intech provides an answer to companies that have outgrown their small solutions but aren't yet ready for full-blown ERP. And this is a little background on Sage Intact as well. And when we reviewed it, we felt that it was really an accounting product. I mean, I just did not see much of the ERP functionality in that. So that's what they are trying to say, that even today, Sage Intact is very lean um, overall in terms of their uh, operational functionality. Um, they are trying to build that. But yeah, it's still today, it, it's, it's very, very lean. Uh, financial force that it had acquired supply chain management vendor less software. Again, they are using the same term and human capital management vendor when a workforce, I don't know what that means. Uh, probably that is specific to any specific industries. Uh, okay, so these two acquisitions that maybe, they acquired. Maybe it means vendor-less because it's not designed for products. It's designed for 
human capital service. Supply chain management vendor-less software. Right. So, so supply chain management. Why is actual consultants or something like that? Right. I think you are right. So basically, you are not going to have procurement there. Right. Uh, or maybe you are going to have indirect procurement. Uh, but that's going to be supply chain management. And it would make sense why um, financial force bought it. So you are probably right there. Yeah. Only uh, guessing. Uh, no, but that does seem right. Thank you so much, Andy. Um, what that means in real terms is all that product. Uh, uh, okay, so I don't see much there. So unless you guys have any other comment. Here, uh, some more commentary here. So this is the vendor announces, uh, you know, this is the funding that they got. Uh, and... Uh, Financial Force itself is an interesting player, actually a subsidiary. So this is where they have used a very specific uh, language, and that is going to be a Unit Force subsidiary, which is very interesting. Uh, um, and Financial Force has somewhat cut the apron. So obviously they parted their ways uh, because now Unit Four, now probably they are competing in in every single deal uh, because you know where you are going to have Unit Four, most likely you are probably going to have Financial Force as well. So, which is kind of interesting. Two brothers or sisters are competing with each other. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, here, the industries that they have outlined, and these are the right industries for them. So, they have outlined business services. Health and life sciences is very interesting. Obviously, these are also going to be the industries where Salesforce is going to have massive play. Typically, the go-to-market strategy for anybody that is going to be in Salesforce ecosystem, they all start with, you know, CRM is easiest to sell, and then I'm going to be selling a lot of follow-on products. That's how Salesforce strategy is. And these are the industries where Salesforce is extremely strong as well. Uh, and, uh, you know, any industries where Salesforce is going to be strong, obviously, your Oracle is going to be strong, Workday is going to be strong, because, again, they all have sort of the synergy in terms of technology that they use. Even Workday is built on Java and Oracle, because, again, that came from Oracle as well. Uh, you know, if, you, if we reviewed Workday history, Workday founder was, uh, you know, from PeopleSoft, uh, Oracle acquired PeopleSoft. So there's a lot of correlation there as well. So these are the industries where Oracle is really strong. Business services, health and life sciences, media and digital communication, professional services and consulting, software, high-tech and IT services, and telecom. Uh, so here, these are the dashboards. And obviously, one of the best things that you are going to find with any of the apps that are going to be as part of your Salesforce ecosystem is going to be the look and feel of Salesforce that you are going to get. In fact, the data model that Salesforce has, obviously, it's one of the strongest data model uh, in the CRM space, but then they have extended the data model for a lot of other applications. So anything that is going to have that is going to be built on Salesforce architecture, it's probably going to have the enterprise, uh, you know, flavor, taste, capabilities, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but, you know, most of them are going to have that power of Salesforce, which is what makes these applications really powerful in general. Now, if you look at the way they have visualized this, and uh, Andy, you were talking about business by design. If you look at the business by design experience, to be honest, it's not going to be as rich as this, okay? Even though it is great, okay? So you are going to get a little Gantt chart. You're going to have, uh, a, you know, but you're not going to get these colorings uh, that you can find in... Uh, in this particular application, um, you know, overall, if you look at the experience, it's done really, really well. The way any consulting companies, companies like you and us, you know, like to see uh, the way our dashboards need to be built. Now, um, so this is the example. And if you look at their pro project, the project for the consulting companies are going to be very different as well. The way they like to structure, for example, if you look at the manufacturing companies, they are probably going to have your departments, divisions, sites, entities. Um, you are probably going to have, uh, you know, country, but you are never going to have something called practice. Okay. So th these guys use a thing called practice because every single capability that your consulting company is going to have is going to be built around a practice. In fact, if you look at some of the engineering firm, design firm, architecture firms, when they are going to be sort of the combination of manufacturing, 30% manufacturing, 
30% cons uh, construction and 30% consulting. So they are also going to be using terms such as practice. And that's where the lines are really thin in terms of, okay, are you a manufacturing company? Are you a construction company? Are right. you a consulting company? <laughs> so, I, got, I got a cute little tidbit for you, Sam. Yeah, please. My, my last name is practice in Italian. Oh, really? Okay. Yes. All right. doctor's so you, practice. So you were really designed for uh, practice, I guess, right? For the uh, software, Andy. yeah. Right, but you are selling in the wrong industry, uh, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> you should be selling in companies with practices. There you go. <laughs> uh, but nice, uh, nice translation there. I like it. Um, okay, uh, so some more, uh, you know, comments here. So now I'm going to read practice as Pratico here. Um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have practice as high tech, and this is how most of the professional services companies are structured. They are going to have, uh, you know, capabilities such as uh, high tech. They are going to have, let's say, if they are selling in manufacturing, they could have a man uh, practice called manufacturing. They could have a practice called distribution, life sciences. These are some of the practices that you are going to have. Uh, manufacturing may have the practice as well, but it's not as formalized organizational structure, uh, you know, they will probably have a target market from the marketing perspective. They might have a little industry, but their financial and operational models are not necessarily designed around these practices. There might be a little boundary there. Let's say if you are selling in medical versus uh, non-medical, you might have a little, uh, you know, walls there inside your company, uh, inside your warehouse. But for the most part, the practices don't really have the formal boundaries and manufacturing. So this is where your project versus service industries are going to be different. Um, you have region, and typically each region is going to have different capabilities because, uh, believe it or not, consulting businesses, even if they are virtual, they are very regionalized. And that's why you have the regional capabilities there. Uh, you know, And then you have account. Uh, account may be used in a lot of different manufacturing industries as well. But again, it's not as uh, formalized. Uh, structure the way their projects are going to be the way they are going to be built it's going to be very different as well uh, overall so that's a real difference between your project manufacturing versus delivering a project uh, as a consulting company uh, and again you know the project companies or project manufacturing could, could have the billing rate as well but the way they account is very different the skills are not as relevant in the consulting business the skills are going to be uh, extremely important because you know you Sometimes the resources could be $70 an hour. Sometimes they could be $200 an hour. I mean, manufacturing, the average resource is probably going to be $20 an hour. <laughs> so that's you a real difference. Cost. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, how much can you lose? Let's say 20%. Yeah. Okay, sure, you are going to lose 15%, you know, on a resource. So what? Uh, you know, that is still very low. But let's say if you're losing 15% on $200 an hour billing rate, good luck with that. <laughs> So that's why the monitoring that you are going to require uh, for a project, especially for the consulting business, is going to be very different in general. Um, surprisingly enough, the, the, in the demo data, they have used a lot of euro. So I don't know if that correlation is coming from the European region or they are selling there. Again, because okay. Unit 4 is a very European company in general. They don't okay. do as well in the US uh, so far. Um, Which they are country trying... in Europe, you know? Unit 4? Yeah. <clears throat> Where are they based? Um, not. I think overall they will do well overall in Western Europe. Uh, that's my understanding. Um, so many, so many companies. You know, obviously with SAP in Germany, that it, it, it makes sense. But so many of the European software ERP systems are in Germany. Uh, surprisingly enough, if you look at the the average or a lot of software companies, even e-commerce companies. A lot of them are from Germany. Uh, you know, uh, Germany, uh, France, Italy, these are the countries that are doing the most software development yeah. for some reason. Yeah. So SAP, obviously, Germany is going to be very hard for Unit 4 in general. Okay. Anything that is going to be based on Germany, you know, SAP by default. Um, even the consulting companies are probably going to be using SAP in general. Uh, they, they grew up using SAP, so they are really big on that. Yeah. Um, unit 4, but Unit 4 IFS, they all are very European-centric company. They mm -hmm. win a lot in Europe. Um, okay. 
Um, so here's some more comments. So here, you know, the, the functionality such as resource request is very different as well. And that is embedded throughout your process. So for example, when you are going to have an opportunity for opportunity, you are going to have a resource request the way you are going to be doing purchase request. So these resource requests are not really your purchase request. These are the resource demand that are triggered by an opportunity. And these resource requests are going to be sort of firm up in your schedule. So, and by the way, the scheduling is very tricky in this particular space as well, because the skills that you are going to have, they are not necessarily replaceable. For example, if you look at manufacturing, there are very, very, very few industries which really care for the skill set. In general, most of the manufacturing workers, you can swap out very easily, unless you are in more of the electronics industry, where let's say you have a welder or, or a solder, you know, for those guys, they require certification. Uh, medical, obviously, you are going to have problems. But for the most part, the workers are really swappable. Uh, that's not the case. So that's why this is very, very, very different. And that's why the HCM workflows are very different as well. And that's the reason why Workday do, does so well in, in these industries in general. Because you need, require the tight integration of your learning certification HCM processes um, as part of your ERP system. Okay. So some more uh, uh, commentary here overall in terms of the planned cost, planned hours. When you are going to be comparing this with the manufacturing projects, uh, it's going to be fairly similar. But again, the tracking of margin is far more important in these industries uh, than any other industries. And then you need to find out, OK, where are the problems overall in terms of the project? In general, even if you are doing expensive construction projects, you are probably going to require this. Uh, you know, They are probably going to have similar workflow and, and life cycle. OK, this is where the rubber really meets the road, to be honest. OK, when you are looking at the life of a project manager, uh, inside a professional services company, the this is what they live and breathe. Okay, so the scheduling uh, again. Then we talk about scheduling. It could mean a lot of different things. Everybody becomes so passionate about scheduling, but when we look at uh, you know service centric scheduling based on a specific skill set, this is a very different project manager workflow, and they need to be really on top of this. And you are going to have things such as swap resources, split assignment. Uh, you know things these. Feature sets you are not going to find in your project centric industries in general. Yeah. And all of that is going to be aligned with your practice region. And region and practice is just not a random field. It is actually part of your workflow, entire workflow. When you are scheduling, when you are costing, everything is sort of very tightly integrated. And again, you know, it's a very different functionality uh, compared to the other systems that we have reviewed so far. Uh, now, even the GAN chart is going to be very different in general. Uh, this one is going to be far more nuanced. Uh, in this particular case, you are going to have the start date and end date. Uh, and you don't necessarily sort of, you are probably going to be estimating this in days. And in most of the manufacturing ERP systems, especially these smaller ones, okay, that are targeting SMBs, they might be estimating in hours. Uh, this, you know, in service companies, you don't really care for hours because you are not doing four-hour jobs unless uh, you know that is going to be part of your service maintenance. And again, service maintenance is a very different industry. They might have very short-run jobs. So again, if you are a professional services company that also does short-run jobs, I don't know if this is going to be a fit for you because this is really designed for those long-term uh, projects that are going to be three months, six months, uh, eight months. Those are and really expensive ones. Yeah, which which is representative with the Gantt chart we're looking at right here. Exactly, exactly, and that's why we have it in days, not in hours. Um, okay, so this is very important as well. So this is the prediction of the projects, and this is a very, very, very important functionality even in the case of construction. And some of the construction ERP systems are trying to come up with this. Uh, you know, one of the things that you want to do as your construction company or as the professional services company, you do not want to work on projects that are going to lose money. Okay, that is a nightmare for the business. And here, estimating that. Okay, the person who typically estimates a project is, you know, is 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 very highly respected in general in these organizations because estimating that uh, to the point precision is 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 very 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 hard. 
So, you know, here what you are doing is you are basically looking at past trends and you are trying to predict whether this project is going to be successful or profitable or you should consider this or not. And sometimes, you know, typically the betting process in most companies is going to be you hire people like ND who are going to be qualifying the deals. And if the deals seem profitable, then it's going to go. But you don't necessarily look at the data. And that's why you have the qualification process as part of your professional service companies. So this is a big deal for these companies as well that you are not going to find in manufacturing system. Yeah. Now, some of the financial functionality is not going to be as intuitive. So overall, the if you look at the object structure, is very intuitive because that's built as part of your Salesforce platform. So the way your Salesforce is going to look and feel, it's going to be very similar. But if you look at, for example, here, you have the edit option for your journal entries. Now, that doesn't make a ton of sense, to be honest. Yeah, okay, from the account, <laughs> accounting perspective, you even have an option for delete. Why and would you edit them? Exactly. And most likely, you are probably going to get an error, okay, that uh, you know, you are not supposed to be deleting this when you are going to be clicking in this. And maybe they allow this. I don't know. Maybe you have an option to sort of allow or not allow. But in general, you know, if you look at this from the accounting perspective, you are probably going to be shot. <coughs> <laughs> now you can delete your journal entries. So who are the QuickBooks? <laughs> uh, but overall, uh, you know, I still like the way their objects are connected and structured. And that is very easy to follow along in general inside Salesforce. And that's why people love Salesforce. Uh, then you are going to have very nuanced scenarios. Uh, overall, when you look at the revenue recognition, revenue expense matching principle, when you have to bill and match the expenses in the same uh, you know, financial cycle, that's where this gets really pretty. And when you are going to have contract where you have one, uh, uh, let's say, prepayment for the project, and then you have the maintenance deal, that is going to be, uh, let's say, uh, what is the right financial term for that? Um, that is going to be amortized, I guess, over the period of, uh, you know, um, the life cycle of the maintenance agreement. Uh, that's where you are going to be, uh, you know, uh, you need probably the nuanced functionality uh, for that. And that's where this uh, system is really designed for that. When you are going to have either the prepayment or when you are going to have one-time payment, uh, it's going to be implementation service maintenance agreement. And those agreements typically are going to have very different life cycle not only from the execution perspective, but also from the revenue recognition perspective. So some reviews. Uh, and here, OK, so let's look at who is this person. So this is coming from Director in Finance and Accounting. This is the telecom account. So this is definitely aligned with their target market, 51 to 200 employees. So this is mid-market. My understanding of financial force solution is they like to go after the really large accounts, enterprises. That's what they are trying to go after. It is not necessarily an SMB solution. The way they started, I think they started as more of the small account. But right now, their target market is really the large accounts. That's what they are going after. So here, the accounting and finance department uses financial force automation. Uh, accounting, FFA for AP, um, GL transactions, our entire organization uses Salesforce as a CRM. And I don't doubt why you would use financial force because you are already on Salesforce and you are a telecom company, which is probably going to have a million operational systems that have nothing to do with ERP. So you really need your HCM, you need financials, you need a little bit of procurement. Uh, and that's why you are appreciating this. And your CRM functionality is going to be far deeper. And we have seen in the case of Salesforce, they are really strong in telecom. They have very nuanced CPQ functionality for telecom insurance verticals. So obviously, Salesforce is really strong in those industries. Uh, uh, and they are saying we are able to automate AP and allow outside department to access vendor and AP information. So this is where your vendor collaboration workflow is going to be, which is going to be far more nuanced that the external systems are able to uh, you know, uh, get that. Uh, financial reporting could be easier to use. So they don't like financial reporting. Again, I don't know where this uh, you know person was coming from. Uh, if this person has used SAP or something like that before, they are probably not going to like this. Go ahead, Andy. Well, I was going to say, uh, you know, financial force obviously is targeted at, at being and offering a financial system. So it's interesting that this fellow is saying that the reporting is not that good. Um, you know, if they're used to SAP, well. I mean, this is only a 200, uh, less than 200 employee company. So that's something doesn't make sense. 
Yeah, believe it or not, I mean, Salesforce reporting is a little clunky, to be honest. Even I've used it, you will call it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. It's not going to be, even some of the ERP systems nowadays probably have the better architecture uh, for Ooh. reporting, yeah, uh, than Salesforce. Salesforce, you have to go to a report tab, uh, the way legacy architecture was. And again, Salesforce was built in 1999, so it's been a little while. You know, you don't really have the reports integrated uh, in your functions. Oh, um, I see. Yeah. Um, accounting people, they are not going to like. Accounting, you know, if you look at the way accounting systems are built, they are designed more from the business user perspective. So for them, it could be slightly harder in general. Um, so here they are saying more out-of-the-box reports for standard reconciliation. And again, it's not going to have as many reports uh, from the accounting and finance perspective that you're going to find with the real financial system. Um, so it's still very baby ERP in general. Uh, it does not have as many, uh, as much accounting functionality. Salesforce is great for CRM, uh, but financial force, uh, not too sure. Mm. Uh, yeah. Some of the processes are time consuming, uh, running an, uh, yeah, they are saying time consuming. I don't know whether they are more talking about just the number of clicks um, they are going to require uh, to do that or really talking about uh, the time it takes in running those processes. Exactly, exactly. And data model is designed more from the CRM perspective, so I don't doubt if they might be taking slightly longer. But in general, Salesforce is very um, sophisticated ERP system, not ERP. Uh, I need to be careful there, CRM system. Uh, but typically, Salesforce, uh, you know, uh, only attacks, let's say, very tiny slice of the data object that it is trying to do when you are doing the whole length of the transaction from your order to cash procure to pay, that's where the real performance is going to be. And when you are going to have the tightness of financial data, uh, you know, a lot of systems struggle. <laughs> it's well, very, you know, very the good. comment you made about uh, ERP, and it's the same thing with CRM. Yeah. To look at Salesforce versus some of these little ones, right? Yeah. Um, these acronyms are more for a marketing, branding, positioning than they are really describing what the product is. And, and you know, I'll you know, when you've been in the business as long as I have, you know, back in the early days, they called it an MRP system. Yeah. And then they called it an MRP2 system with, you know, II. And, yeah. then, they, and then they called it, uh, rebranded it to be an ERP system. And, and at each stage, all the packages, no matter how sophisticated or how simple, try to jump on the bandwagon of the new branding. And I'm only waiting for the new branding <laughs> of the ERP systems, you know, ERP2 or whatever they want to call it, you know? Exactly, yeah. And with I'm, CRM, I mean, Salesforce really is an enterprise CRM system. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, acronyms can only go so far. I mean, you cannot oh. be binary about these systems. I mean, they are really complex it's systems. just marketing branding. That's I all know. it is. I know. Um, so some more comments here. Uh, FFA is a great choice if you are already using Salesforce and want to report on KPIs directly from the source data, obviously the integration is going to be very tight. There's yes, no question I, about I, that. I've heard that, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, some more questions. Uh, so this is the financial force for a growing small company. Uh, this is the computer software company, which is the right fit, okay? This is like one of the best uh, that you can get for the computer software. Um, 51 to 200 people. So here's some more commentary. Uh, since Salesforce was not made with accounting in mind, so even they are complaining about accounting, building Ooh. financial force as a module on top of Salesforce gives problems because the overarching architecture of Salesforce cannot facilitate all the accounting requirements. And I completely agree with that. Hmm. Uh, the financial force integration team was not as good. Sure, that's more of the jab on their support and implementation. Don't expect your OEM to provide consulting. That's not their uh, you know, role. Um, so if you cannot afford to pay for consulting, you know, this is what you get, I guess. Uh, <laughs> did not help set up uh, our financial force very well. They are product experts. They are not supposed to be consultants. Uh, their customer support is also lacking. I mean, you know, this is what customer support in general looks like uh, for most OEMs. So I don't uh, buy that. Um, financial force does not actually build financial statements reports. Uh, Nobody is going to do that in the market. Uh, hire consultants who can who are going to do this for you. Um, if your business is not a subscription business, financial force will be easier to manage. And that is a little shocking comment for me uh, because now they are saying that 
uh, and subscription. I don't know whether this is more of the product subscription or the service subscription. No, I think mean, uh, this is probably service subscription. So if you think about that, that's that's warranty agreements, right? Or uh, service agreements. Subscription, you're paying a monthly fee for whatever it requires. That would be for the product centric companies. But I think this guy is referring for more of the service centric company, even that as well. You could have subscription and typically Zora was the product that was really designed for that. Even Netflix okay. does really well in that service subscription model where you are going to have, let's say you talk about, you said warranty and you, did you say maintenance agreement as well, Andy? Uh, contracts, service contracts. Service contracts. and Preventative uh, maintenance, right? Yeah, I, I just want to be a, a little careful there because there's a little nuance there between yeah, your. No, not, I, 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 yeah, you're right. I, it's not a product. I, mean, I was it's still, um, I, I don't know, I guess some service oriented uh, human capital type service companies are providing contracts as well, I assume. So this is going to be, for example, let's say you have your ERP business, right? So you typically would charge hourly rate. Right. But then if you, let's say, want to provide some sort of support, support that Infor or SAP is providing, uh, then that support is going to be, OK, uh, you know, I am going to have the support okay, agreement. Like the hotline uh, support, for exactly, example. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, okay. gotcha. That's a very different business model in general. Yeah. That's okay. what I think he's referring. Yeah. Uh, so some more uh, comment here. Financial uh, force accounting by Salesforce. Uh, accounting company, 10,000 employees. Mind blowing that 10,000 employees. Uh, company is able to use financial force. Okay, so what are they experiencing? System is slow when <laughs> natural because obviously you didn't use the right system. Uh, you know, problems with action views, so we don't have much details. But, you know, I don't know if this can really pull off um, the workload expectations of the 10,000 people company. And by the way, here we are talking about just the finance. Okay, when you are going to have as complex processes manufacturing, Good luck with that. And these are older yeah. comments, so too. This is 2016. Yeah, but I don't know if there's a lot that has been changed, especially hasn't in the financial really change, forward the architecture ecosystem. Hasn't really changed change much? Okay. Uh, architecture, I would doubt, and I don't know how much they are selling, and based on how much they are able to sell, obviously, that's how much R&D money they are going to have. So it's not that they are going to change the product completely. Uh, data model is not going to change. So yeah, I, I probably would agree with this comment. Uh, here, construction company, 51 to 200 employees. Again, I think there's a little stress there. Either we have two small companies or two large companies. Wow. Yeah, so let's see what construction. So construction company is saying financial force accounting is being used by the accounting department. So construction company has used only for the uh, uh, for the accounting. And sometimes the construction companies uh, could be a little different as well, okay? So let's say if you are going to have more of the architectural companies, their professional services workflow is very strong in general, and you have a lot of apps in the Salesforce ecosystem. Sure. They start using a lot of CRM functionality, and they say, hey, I've got another app, Financial Force, use it for accounting. Uh, <laughs> so that's how that process typically goes, uh, but you know, you miss everything in between, I guess. Uh, so here they are saying it is not directly used by any other department. I believe you because it's not going to work. Uh, <laughs> But it is integrated with our salesforce.com platform, which is used by sales department. I believe you, again, you are combining sales accounting, but everything else is missing. Uh, that's not how you run your construction business. Uh, so sorry, that's a wrong buy. Should not have bought this. Uh, it took a very, very, very long time to implement. And we had configuration issues after the implementation. Wrong product. You know, you are going to get tons of issues there. Um, so good luck with that. I, I hate the, to say this, but very, very long time is a relative statement. Exactly. I agree. <laughs> exactly. What does that mean? Um, well, it took five me years. three days. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's see if we can keep, cover some more comments here. Uh, we have four minutes. We'll open up for some comments. Salesforce. Here. Okay. These guys yeah. obviously like it. Uh, Andy, how much time do you need for the comments? We have four minutes. You, you tell me. Do you want to do reviews? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's do some more reviews then. So here we have, um, this is the transportation company. By the way, transportation vertical, great vertical for, for Salesforce. They there are really go. strong there in general. Yeah. Okay. So this is a great fit probably for financial force as well. And the reason why it is a great fit is because the operational workflow that these companies are going to have is very different. Your ERP systems are probably going to suck. Uh, so please do not buy any ERP system for your transportation. Uh, company, you know, this requires very different operational system, and that's why Salesforce and Financial Force is right fit here. So here they are saying the reporting engine can be overwhelming, 
for the average user. So this is probably second or third comment, uh, you know, for the reporting. So it's not just one. So there is a real problem there with reporting. Uh, this is improving with each new release, but is not out there. Uh, what is the date here? We don't have date here. I don't know. It's probably the, uh, probably the older one as well. While the company does not use purchase orders, there may be a need. So this is probably an older review because now I think they have the purchase orders uh, when they bought that uh, supply chain solution. But again, that solution is going to be very specific to your service-centric companies. It's not really designed for your direct it's procurement. Renderless. Exactly. 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 <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay. So there may be some need at some point in the future to the procurement and known uh, operations, goods and service. Goods, forget about it. You get services, that could be a huge win. Uh, the functionality isn't currently supported by financial force, although, uh, okay, some you can create some purchase, custom purchase objects, uh, you know, that you can do in any system. That's like pure development. So don't try that. Uh, also had a simple, straightforward expense reporting. Yeah, so a lot of problems overall. Uh, two minutes. So we have good product, but has some gaps. No customizable uh, financial statements hmm. so again financial, yeah yeah financial statements a lot of complaints about reporting financial statements uh by the way this is from 2022 nd can you believe wow. this yeah. yeah there Just tends to be a few months ago exactly uh some oh, heralded really? solution to this but so far every one of them has had their own shortcomings we end up using so they are using power bi by the way power bi is not supposed to be your erp now if you have to design your ERP on Power BI, you are going to have a lot of issues in general. Uh, some You're more... using Power BI for what? For analytics or so for financial statements? It becomes really crazy and the way it works. And I'm probably going to be, let's talk about this issue. Okay. So typically the way the companies work is they are going to have a lot of shortcoming that they are not able to manage. So what they do is they try to create these workflows inside these dashboards and Power BI just because it's slightly easier to manage. You can write it whatever SQL. It looks like it might work. It's easier for business users because they can write SQL statements. But the goal sure. of that is not really to create ERP. The goal of that is just create reports uh, that are going to be easy. Uh, financial reports, you know, it, yes, it is a report, but it, it does a lot more than that. <laughs> um, comments, Andy? No, I, I, you know, I think you did a good job covering it. I think it, uh, well, you know, basically financial force, its namesake obviously tells you what is targeted at. But uh, as far as a project management, I guess a financial project, project management system, it's probably not bad, but it seems to, it does seem to be missing some pieces. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Thank you so much, Andy. So let's do the comments uh, real quickly. I suppose practice is like a doctor's practice. Okay, so okay, so you have somebody who can uh, you know match up your speed, Andy. Uh, you know, let's hope hope the edit of the jail entry actually leaves the original entry. Uh, yes, you are so right. Andy. That's a, that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. We have seen in some system, Makola. I guess you know they they eat the court when they are going to be converting that to the order. So good luck with those systems. Um, you know, so that's a great comment, I guess. Uh, Andy, you have not heard of exact industrial excellent internet enterprise resource planning and <laughs> continual improvement. E of <laughs> Attaboy, Anders. Um, thank typical you. Typical Anders comment. <laughs> yeah, well, and there's an acronym for you. <laughs> exactly, 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 exactly. Amazing, Andy. Any other comments? No, that's it. All thank right. you, sir. All right, guys, that's it for today. If you joined for the first time, this was part of our industry series for which we meet every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. Eastern. We pick one vendor or the solution. So make sure you guys are going to be here next week. We are going to come back with another solution or the vendor. On that note, thanks, everyone, for tuning in tonight. Have a great week, everybody.